commonly known foul drawing artist in James Harden is averaging his lowest free throws attempted since his sophomore campaign. At one point in his career, Harden was averaging 12 free throws per night, but that's been cut in half this year in Brooklyn to just 5.3. Trey Young's averaging the least amount of charity stripe attempts in his career and putting up the lowest points per game average since his rookie year. The point of emphasis for refs this season is to no longer call fouls on plays involving unnatural shooting motions. This video shows you how that's impacting our game's biggest stars and breaks down whether or not this new rule makes the NBA a better product to watch, and are there any other specific calls that need to be changed. Before continuing, only 27.5% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're not in that percentage, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Players like DeRozan, Curry, and Embiid have only had to make slight adjustments and have found loopholes, barely seeing the amount of free throws they attempt per game fall off this season. Conversely, for players like James Harden and Trey Young, whose entire games revolve around manufacturing unnatural contact, their stats have fallen off significantly. While this has been unfortunate for those two players in particular, lowering their value in today's game, the league overall is highly benefiting from this. Before showing you the abundance of more fans tuning in to watch games in comparison to previous years, I want to talk about how the beard James Harden and Ice Trey Young have been impacted by this. Harden's still getting back to full form after his hamstring injury from last spring's playoffs, but even considering that setback, he was off to a shockingly bad start in 2021-22, averaging 16.6 points over his first five games and shooting 36% from the field. Friday night, he did break out of that, dropping 29 while draining 16 of his 19 free throws. However, Last night, the three-time scoring champ and former 36-point-per-game scorer attempted just seven shots from the field and got to the line only three times. To the Beard's credit, he finished with an 18-point triple-double. As I mentioned in the intro, Harden's 5.3 FTAs are the lowest total since his second year in the league. Additionally, Harden's free throws made per game, which is at 4.6, is the lowest total since 21-year-old OKC Harden posted 3.5 back in 2011-12. Harden's scoring got a lot worse with this new rule, but the recently turned 32-year-old has seen his passing slowly become the focal point of his offensive repertoire. Last season, altering his playing style to fit next to two future Hall of Famers in Kyrie and Durant, Harden was number two in the NBA in assists per game. James told reporters last week that he's quote, slowly getting back to where he was before dealing with a series of hamstring injuries last season, including one he played through during the Nets seven game conference semifinals loss to Milwaukee. Like Harden, Trey Young is also starting to see his game revolve around facilitating as Trey's averaging a career high 10 assists and a career low three turnovers per game. Unfortunately for fans looking to see Ice Trey average 40 per night, that's probably not gonna happen. Trey's 29% three-point clip is the man's lowest ever NBA average. His 22.3 points per night is the lowest total since his rookie year, and Trey's also setting a career low in free throws attempted at just 4.3. Young was fined 15K for making contact with a ref a few days ago, so maybe this new rule is what's frustrating him. More on Trey and Harden later on. While Ice Trey's pull-up bombs are fun to watch, tons of fans from casuals to know-it-alls were turned away by how the man was constantly hooking his opponent's arms as well as stopping and flopping for fouls. Hawks fans got extra points on the board for their team, but all the free throws which seemed forcefully drawn from Trey slowed down the game. So even for ATL diehards, Young's foul drawing artistry was boring to watch night in night out. Harden did the same damn thing. If any player guarding him would stretch out their hands and get in a normal guarding stance, Harden would take a few dribbles, lean in, and get to the charity stripe just like that almost stealing an advantage for his team by deceiving the refs and also getting superstar calls, which has killed the NBA over the last decade. 
Fans pay and tune in to see hard-nosed tough players compete in a fair environment. They don't watch for free throws taking up 80% of the game when they should be only taking up 10 to 20% of it. They don't watch for superstars getting every call, but rookies getting hammered and having to live with it. Whether or not a foul is called should have literally nothing to do with a player's reputation, but I know that's not how everyone feels nowadays. That's not even how every ref feels nowadays, given we're in the pampered superstar era. That type of nonsense doesn't sell tickets, and it certainly doesn't get you closer to the NFL in terms of ratings. Before showing you another NBA point of emphasis which needs to be changed, let's talk about those ratings. According to Sports Media Watch, the 76ers vs Knicks averaged 1.4 million viewers, representing a 71% increase from a similar night during the 2021 season that started in December. Better yet, it was also an improvement on a Thursday night TNT broadcast from 2019 which drew 658,000. ESPN's broadcast of Phoenix vs LA pulled in 1.24 million viewers, an 8% spike from last season, and a 59% improvement on a game in the same slot during the 2019 season, which was filled by the NFL. The New York Knicks and Boston Celtics double overtime game averaged 1.96 million viewers, topping out at an audience size of 2.87 million late in the game. The Phoenix Suns vs Denver Nuggets drew 1.74 million. That was part of the season opening doubleheader. The network announced it was their most watched season opening broadcasts since 2017, and the single Knicks Celtics broadcast was the most watched opener for ESPN in 18 years. I'm not saying the numbers are going up because of this rule, but clearly these games are drawing a lot more hype from fans this year which probably has to do with the fewer stoppages in play, given players are attempting less free throws. This next segment could be a video for another day, but I want to know why beautiful and ones like this from King James yesterday just keep getting called off. Another one I don't have footage for is OG Ananobi of my raps getting an and one against the Bulls a couple games ago, but it was called off, and that Chicago-Toronto outing ended up being a three-point game non-calls when it's clearly continuation, which I swear I'm seeing in every game I watch. They have a massive impact on the outcome of these competitive matchups and therefore the standings. If I keep seeing these brutal wave it off side out calls from officials this season, I'll have to make a separate video on that. This point of emphasis slash rule change has really changed everything about the NBA. From unbiased refs who aren't looking to blow the whistle anytime a star player merely flails, to the pace of play and more competitive games, everything this season is different compared to previous years. If two of our game's best shot creators in Harden and Trey want to maintain their star status, a few things will have to happen. How Harden played in his triple-double outing on Sunday night was ideal for the new game. He can't expect to hook his defender's arm to victory anymore, so setting up Durant and the Nets role players as much as he can seems like the way to go. I'm hoping Harden starts to aim for his first career assist title. For Trey, he just needs to watch tape on Stephen Curry's play this season. Curry's a point guard with almost the exact same playing style as Trey, and while they work in different offensive systems, Curry also thrived off flopping for the foul, but he's adjusted seamlessly. Young needs to examine how Curry's done that by putting in a much needed film room session. How much does this rule really change the NBA in your opinion? Let me know in the comments. This was D-Flow, you're the best for sticking around, and I'll see you next video.